Hi everybody, I'm Denise from Foursquare Marker Farm. I just want to thank you all for taking the time uh, for watching the videos for the beginning Angora Rabbit Spinning. Um, each of these videos are made, or most of my videos are made by request. So I thank everybody and all the subscribers who watch. I uh, thank you as you go through the process of me trying to figure out how to make the best video shots and how to edit videos. Um, and also how to get my lighting all together. So thanks everybody. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions for videos, uh, let me know so that I can bring more um, spinning yarn content to you. Thanks a lot. Hi everybody, I'm Denise from Foursquare Micro Farm. And you know, I had started the video on Angora before it had occurred to me that someone would probably want me to talk about prepping. And to be honest, I do almost no prepping to the Angora. Uh, either it's clipped or it's plucked. It depends on whichever rabbit I'm doing and the time in the cycle. There's a point in the cycle where my French will pluck at the end of their cycles. And most of them will pluck all the way down. And I still I have a few that won't pluck all the way down. So I either pluck them as much as I can, then I clip the rest, or I just clip it totally. It depends. The English, they uh, molt, so they're plucked. So it depends which one. So anyway, I do all the sorting for the fiber that comes from my rabbits prior to my actual spinning. And it's just all bagged up in here. And that's how I spin it. I just grab a chunk of it. This is the clipped French right here. Okay. And if it's clipped in these, it's kind of like a chunk. Not really a lock, but sort of. And if it's in these locks, I just put it on the end of my handmade brush. And I flick the ends. If I do that, sometimes I just spin it right from the tips. But let's say that um, I need to flick it. So I just flip the ends. Okay. Fluff it up a bit. And generally, I do this if the fiber is shorter than four inches. I will go ahead and fluff it up, and that will pull out anything short. Okay, so now it's kind of fluffy, and I can spin it just like that. That's normally the way I do it, if I do anything to it at all. But it does, it is handy to be able to make a roll egg. This right here is not my own fiber, so it hasn't been um, skirted. So here I would do is spread it out on the makeshift blending board. Just like that. And I know some people said they don't really like like cut fiber. Find that if you don't like cut fiber, but you have a breed that you have to clip, like Germans or Giants, some of the French, some of the English, it kind of depends if you have a line, I should say, so it's not really breed specific, specific. Then one of the things you can do is rough up the fiber a bit by carding it. Okay, like you would any other cut fiber. And I just... I'm not even really carding this. Just kind of flicking it on a giant scale. You know, bam. That's kind of how that works. I lay it back on here. Okay. And you can roll it like a roll egg. And now that I'm doing this, I'm looking like where in the world is my dowel to make to make the roll egg. But ideally you have a dowel. Hmm. Use a knitting needle. And you would start rolling from the ends. This is going to be a really small one. The diameter of your roll egg is going to match the diameter of your dowel. So 
a pencil would have been better if I could find one of those guys. But I couldn't, so I'm just kind of improvising. But you see, I'm rolling. Okay. And in a, in a neat world, that would make a nice, neat Rolex style. Slide that off. Bam. You've got your Rolex. Okay. Uh, or you could have folded it over. Okay. And pulled that off and spun from the end of that. That's a good way to go. Now, you could also make bats or pull roving. Let me get the diz. Okay, so here's a diz that was sent to me. You can feed that through the hole. Let's feed it through the smallest hole. Get yourself some roving. I don't generally make it in gore. Actually, I don't usually make it roving at all. But I don't generally make it in gore roving. But if you're beginning and want to work on thinner spins, this will help you with your drafting. I have this thin piece here coming out. So you could always do that. If you're blending with wool, this will hold better and make a nice roving. And full roving. And then, of course, there's always the drum carter. Well, you will you'll make a bat. The drum carter I have is only 72 TPI. When I got it at the time, um, I didn't have the Angoras. And I was pretty much only interested in a lot of the down wools, which I still am. I do very little, very fine wools. And so I don't really have a problem using it. And actually, I run alpaca through it all the time. And I don't have a problem with the alpaca. And so I would not recommend using a drum carter that is any less than 90 teeth per inch. 90 is pushing it, and it may eat English Angora. Uh, I find it's 90 is okay for most things I use it for. Okay, so that's enough with the Angora roving. 90 is, is okay for most of the things I use it for. Um, but you need, still need to be careful with that. 120 is better. Or if you can do finer. So you just kind of have to decide. Maybe if you can't afford to get the drum. Where you can change. Or get the carter where you can change the drums. Get two carters. You know. But if you're like me. And you know, really can't afford that. Then I have a the blending board. And I have a 90. On both pieces of the blending board. Or if you're just starting. And you don't want to make either one of those investments. Cat brushes and dog brushes. Are generally fine enough in order to um, brush or to cart and gore with. So get the best of those that you can afford. Okay, now that is pretty much how I process Angora when I do process Angora and uh, spin it. So you can go from there. Thanks a lot.